Hello, my name is Tony Botting and I'm a simulation specialist at Go Engineer. In this video, we'll talk about using shell elements for heat transfer analysis. If you use shell elements for thermal analysis, a convection boundary condition represents both sides of the structure. That's because there's only one surface on which to apply the thermal boundary condition, so you'll need to use two times the convection value that you would normally use for each side of a solid element mesh. For example, this model block is meshed with solid elements and has one fin for cooling. It has a 10 watt power source here. We apply 100 watts per meter square K as a convective boundary condition to each side of the fin because both sides are exposed to air at 75 degrees F. We'll show the mesh now to see the solid elements. We've solved the analysis so we'll look at the results. We'll use the probe tool on the temperature distribution. The top of the cooling fin shows 82 degrees, and the heat source shows 91 degrees. To make the model run faster, you can save a lot of time by using shell elements, particularly if there are many fins. This fin surface is modeled with shell elements. Since there is only one surface on which to apply the convection, we need to double the boundary condition to 200 watts per meter square K to get the equivalent cooling as we did using solid elements. Here we probe the result to see the same values as with the solid element model. The one on the left is the solid element fin model and has 100 watts per meter square K applied to each side of the fin surface or two surfaces. The one on the right is the shell element fin model and a 200 watt per meter square K is applied to the fin surface because the single shell mesh surface represents both sides of the fin. In this video, we discussed using shell elements to represent fin surfaces in a heat transfer analysis.